Okay, so I'm going to do a little demonstration here of the uh, loop antenna with a high let go amplifier. Currently the amplifier is out of the circuit. We're connected directly to the uh, one meter loop. Little shielded magnetic loop that I've been working on. And we'll zoom in to about oh, zoom level of five probably. Uh, one two, three, four, five. And that would give us, it looks like, about a megahertz or more of width. And we'll bring this thing up so it's not quite so green. I think if we look at this at about a minus uh, 130, that should probably be good, thereabouts. A little bluer blue. Down here we have a dBm meter, so we can kind of keep track of what the noise floor looks like. We'll set this thing at 24 and at 24 uh, we currently have uh, a noise level of 110. There's some signals there. We'll move off of those and yeah minus 110 at that point. Maybe we'd do better if we used upper sideband. Probably get better readings. Okay, a minus uh, 118, minus 118 with the signal sideband set up. As we come across here, here's a kind of a lower point. Here we're down to a minus 122. And at 900 kilohertz or thereabouts, looks like we have a minus 120. We'll go up the band, getting into the broadcast band. See what we have here beside this signal. We have a minus 122 right there. Minus 122. Looks like it's staying pretty steady. It might be a little noisier here. Let's take a look. Okay, it's minus 112, minus 113 there coming off the antenna. Looks like it definitely might be noisier over here by WWV. Got a minus 114. Over here we're back down to minus 122. So we're kind of fluctuating between a minus 120 to 115 in there that in, in that range. So we go on minus 122. Up here we have a minus 120. We can probably skip along pretty good. It looks like it's staying down around a minus 120. As we go up the band, there's not a whole lot of deviation. The noise floor is down lower than a minus 120, generally speaking, with some higher points. Here we got a little grass growing. We'll take a look at that. Okay, we're at a minus 114, 116 right there. Quite a bit more there. Let's see what that looks like. It's a minus 111, 117, 111. So say now we're looking at a minus 110 to a minus 120 of noise figure, depending on where we are. Looks like we're probably back down to a minus 116. We're up at 10 megahertz. See what we got going on here. We got a noise floor. It looks like of a minus 117. I could put this spec filter on fast. Probably give us a little better indication of stuff. There we are. Minus 121, 123. We're in a broadcast band here. Let's jump right in the middle there and see what we get. Minus 122. Pretty low noise floor. Certainly reasonable. We're starting to get some spurs from my network. I'm working on that. I've put in a shielded uh, network switch, which took the spurs down generally 5 dB. And I've got some shielded network cables coming that I'm going to put in. Okay, we're at a minus 122 there. 15 megahertz, 100, minus 122. Minus 121, minus 120, 15. 
16 looks about the same. 17 looks about the same. 17 meter amateur band, minus 120 dB to the noise floor. And remember, this is without an amplifier. When I plug the amplifier in, I'm going to use 8 volts DC to the amplifier. So I think that'll keep the noise floor reasonably low and yet give me a significant amount of gain on the signals. I can get the maximum gain out of it at 12 volts, but I've also noticed that the noise floor comes up substantially. I'll take a look at this strong spur and see what it's doing. Looks like it's about a minus 103. Yeah, look at that, minus 103. So it gives you an idea of its signal strength. Those spurs are pretty irritating. 21 megahertz, we start getting lots of spurs. All the way up here through 22. The noise floor, though, is staying down about a minus 120 on that antenna. And that's kind of the way that looks all the way across here. A noise floor between 110 and a minus 120. Um, maybe getting down as low as uh, yeah, about minus 120 is pretty much where we're at. The high of a minus 110 on the noise. And most of the time it's down in the minus 120 range. All the way through here. So that's the antenna in general. I'm going to zoom this out. Once again we have the full spectrum. I'm going to pause this and go and plug in my power at 8 volts DC. Okay, I'm back. I plugged it in. It's now amplifying the signals with 8 volts of DC. We'll zoom back in to 5 levels and we'll see what our noise floor is doing at that voltage level. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll take her down to 60 kilohertz and see if we have a time signal. It appears that we do. And our time signal is pulsing away here at about a minus 112. We'll move off of that. And we've got about a minus 114, a minus 115 noise level. That's minus 95 dB there. That's interesting. Let me get right on that and see what it tells me I have. Okay, I can't keep up with it quite, but we can see up here on the spectrum graph that it's about a minus 94 down to about a minus 110 right in that location. A little bit of noise right there. If we go to 24, we might be able to see. Yeah, we can actually see the uh, uh, Jim Crick Naval Station MSK. We can probably hear it too. Let's see what we can hear. Yeah, there's Jim Crick. So we are receiving all the way down to 24 kilohertz. And our noise floor looks relatively flat coming across here. Uh, looking at a minus 127. Oh, I've got the wrong setup. Let's go upper sideband for our testing. Okay, a minus 114 into the broadcast band. Uh, looking at a minus 116 through there. And yeah, minus 110 through there. And yeah, let's start going up the band and looking at this to see what it's doing to us. And yeah, it looks like the broadcast band is getting a little busier here. Yeah, let's pick a spot where it doesn't look like we have much activity. I guess we got something going on about everywhere. Minus 114 there. So we're getting quite a bit of signal and we still have a very low noise floor. Our signal to noise ratio from our original uh, look with just the antenna 
has improved considerably, but the noise floor really hasn't come up very much at 8 volts DC. If I had cranked that on up to 9.5, 10, 12 volts, the noise floor would have come up significantly. At 8 volts, my noise floor is staying pretty much at the same level as just the antenna. There's WWV. Let's see what we can get out of that. Always nice to be able to hear it. So we are getting a reasonable gain, but not the maximum gain from our high let go amplifier. Here's the 80 meter amateur band at this setup. We have a minus 115. So I'll just zoom through this kind of quickly. You don't want to take up too much time. You can kind of keep an eye on that upper trace, the general color of the waterfall. And you can see that by and large, we're staying at between 110 and a, a minus 110 to minus 120. Now here things are looking a little noisier. It's still a minus 108. So that's above a minus 110. So this is getting a little noisier right here. And the amplifier is probably adding to it. But we did have some areas that had more noise with just the antenna as we came through this region. So let's try it right here. This looks a little buzzy. Yeah, minus 106, minus 105. So our noise floor is increasing through here over what the antenna was. We have more noise in this region than the antenna had by itself. There's still a reasonable noise floor. It's uh, down approaching a minus 110. And our signals are standing up, so we'd be able to receive them. I'm not real certain if I increase the gain and uh, increase my signal peaks, the noise floor comes up. And I haven't taken comprehensive enough tests with a fixed signal source to know whether or not my signal to noise ratio improves with additional gain or not. But I doubt that it does. I think if I bring up the gain until the, the noise floor remains pretty much static across the, uh, the band, that the signal peaks that I get are probably my best signal to noise ratio. I will probably get the best linearity out of the high let go amplifier at 8 volts. It always looks a little neater to see signals stand up a little taller, but the goal here is to have the very best signal to noise ratio to get the most out of it. Here's our 20 meter amateur band that looks real clean. This is real clean at 15 megahertz. 16, 16 megahertz looks good. 17 megahertz looks real good. 18 looks good. And you'll notice we only have 19 dB of gain on our waterfall maximum. So our signals are not uh, being brightened up as much as they could be. And here, once again, we're getting our network uh, spurs. I don't like those. I'm going to have to work harder at getting rid of them. Martin says you wrap toroids around your cables, everything you've got to try to do it. Another fellow says you use shielded cables and shielded switches to get rid of them. I'm trying the shielded cable and the shielded switch method in the one location and if that works why well, I'll probably do my entire shack out of shielded cables and shielded switches. If not I guess I'll have to knuckle down and start winding toroids which is really kind of a, a job and an expense and puts a lot of extra clutter on things. But you can see these spurs are fairly serious when you get up to 22 megahertz. And interestingly enough this is the low impedance point on that loop antenna. It's a one meter shielded magnetic loop um, that I've been working with. And for a ways through here, those uh, spurs are every 60 kilohertz going up the band. Around 25 we get out of them. And you can see that we're still working at a noise floor of between 110 and 120, minus 110 to a minus 120. 
here we are at 27 megahertz nothing on CB today nothing on 10 meters today and there's 30 megahertz and so that concludes the noise floor test this is that region where we get a lot of uh, of uh, 60 kilohertz spurs from the network the local area network here in the shack we get some of them all through here but they're greatly attenuated uh, in most of the bandwidth most of this bandwidth has a impedance value of 400 ohms or more I say that because my my uh, test equipment only reads up to 400 ohms if it goes higher than that it just says greater than so this area is greater than 400 ohms but this area drops down to as low as 12 ohms so there's something going on with the impedance match I think that lets more of this signal into the amplifier although even without the amplifier this signal right in this range is more outstanding you can really see it so I'm not sure electrically maybe that's just where these signals fall but anyway there you have it that is uh, with the amplifier we'll boost this thing up to about minus 50 and suddenly you see we have quite a bit of flash and color and dancing signals and it looks like you could receive something there so that's it with 8 volts of DC by the way I am adjusting my current with a variac on the uh, analog uh, voltage supply to bring it down from the 12 volts that it normally runs at and that's how I'm currently adapting my voltage if I determine that that's the voltage that I want to run all the time I'll make an allowance for that in my uh, design and we'll adjust that voltage down so anyway this is KA7U and that's probably enough to bore anyone to tears <laughs>